Hello, and here we are again in Wild Sun Art Studio. My name is Robinson, and I'm really happy that you are here again today. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share if you will, if you want. And we're having another session of postcards across the COVID miles, or anybody's miles inches, whatever. So the next step in our um, postcarding adventures here in Wild Sun Studio is, um, well, basically, I guess my name for these is just a rectangular paper cut, which is kind of an interesting cut because you can't just fold in half and half and half and get there. You know, have to do a little finagling. But I will show you how. And I just thought that you would look at how incredibly kind of, you know, noisy. This one's really talking to you. Um, yes, I keep stopping in the middle of my sentences. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so here we are. These are my ideas. And today, oh, this is the other thing that can happen if you cut in the middle. You can make kind of a frame. This would be a weird frame because it has these little intrusions. But there's a way to make a squarish -y frame. So that's kind of fun. Um, anyway, we're kind of edging up on Valentine's Day here. Not that it needs to be February before you can edge up on Valentine's Day. Valentine's is an appropriate celebration pretty much any day of the year. Um, but anyway, I thought we would work with some Valentine-y colors. These are two. This one got crunched a little bit. Um, but these are two that I have made so far. So listen, let's talk about the fold. Let's use red because I think it'll show up on this table a little bit better. So the first thing we're going to do is fold. This is, by the way, it's still origami paper, but it's two-sided origami paper, which is interesting doesn't matter because, you know, we glue them down, so it um, doesn't matter what's on the other side. So the first fold, well, first what you do is you cut your paper the size. I'm using for these postcards a 4 by 6 inch format. You're welcome to make this postcard in any shape you want. You could do a square one, too, and then you don't have to do the rectangular cut, um, you just have to pay a little extra postage, which isn't that much money. So the first fold is you just fold it in half, and the second fold is that you fold it in half the other way. And I'm making these folds nice and crisp. Now, you'll notice that, of course, we can't, there's some sort of an obvious place. If I fold this in half, then we miss a bunch of space. So this is what I figured out. This is the edge that has the folds, and this is the edge that's open, right? So this is the open corner here. Make the fold so that the diagonal is going to come out of this open edge corner. And actually, let's get closer. All right. And it might be a good idea to use a bone fold or something nice and strong. I've been raving lately about using a... Um, this edge of a Sharpie marker. It's just so smooth. If you don't have a bone folder, these Sharpie markers work very well. 
Okay, so now we've got this fold. However, there's all this space that's kind of hanging out in the wind there. So fold that up. Okay, so here's that open edged, cut edged um, fold. The fold comes right out of that corner that's open and then you fold this one under. And now, just to complicate things, we're going to open the whole thing open wide, right? So let's fold so we can see the back side of the paper. We'll redo that fold. Now there's a fold that goes straight across. This is a mountain and this is a valley, but it still tells you where to fold. Fold this side of the paper up. Then flip it over, and there's that mountain on this half and valley on this half, but make the whole thing a valley, and fold it there, and to know that you've done it correctly, you'll get a kind of W or a weird little M out of that, okay? So then... There's this fold right across the middle. Fold that back in half. And you can kind of repress all of these edges. They'll get a little misaligned because we're making some mountain folds into valley folds and the paper could get confused. Now the last fold that we have to refold is there's this diagonal fold here fold the front half to the front and that's actually folding this was a mountain and we're making it into a valley fold and then fold the back to the back so now we have one of those triangles that, um, you know, we always have when we're folding. Ta-da! M. Um, just occurred to me, we haven't really talked about mountain folds and valley folds. This is a mountain fold because it looks like a mountain. Ta-da! But if you hold it like this, it's a valley fold, like a bee, because it looks like the valley between two mountains. That's all that is. Okay, so now we have this edge that's all cut edges, right? And this point is all folded parts of the uh, paper. This fold is the center area of the paper cut. So if I took my scissors and cut the point off parallel with this outside cut edge, this is what we would get, you see? And you could just cut that off, and then you would have a perfect frame. Ta-da! But we're not going there today. We're going to make this into something pretty. Actually, you know what? This is complicated. Um, the, the frame cut, I think, is more complicated than this cut, which just kind of makes two centers. Let's do this one first, but we'll work on this in a minute. So again, we're folding in half the long ways, and then in half the other way, 90 degrees. Then we're going to fold the triangle so that it, the diagonal comes out of this cut edge corner. 
And then this odd little sticking out rectangle, we will fold up just so we know where it is. And this is a lot of layers. So I find a bone folder or a Sharpie pen to be very helpful. Then you undo the whole thing. I like to um, turn this inside out so that I will see the final color as I cut. I guess I find that sort of motivating, but it doesn't really matter which color is on the outside. Let me fold this in half. Let me fold the front to the front and the back to the back. And again, you have to sort of, oh, I don't know. Have, have these little folding chit chats with your paper so that you get all these edges exactly where you want them to be. And that hopefully your corners are going to come up. See right there how it's a little square right there. Oops. It's fine though. It doesn't show that much. Okay, so this is the outside edge. All the edges that are cut edges are the outside edge. And then this fold that's all folded edges, that'll be, well, let's use this one. That'll be in the center there. That's how it goes. So because this is Valentine's Day. Let's cut hearts. So I've just recently found all these amazing paper cut channels um, and they seem to come out of India and I say that because the words they use to describe the cuts are words from India um, like Toran and a word that starts with J I can't remember what that is right now And they're really wonderful. And they always draw on their paper first. I have to say, I kind of like not drawing on mine. It um, makes it a big surprise. Excuse me. I was about to sneeze. Yeah, so I like this sort of surprise element that goes on here. my left brain to make me talk. All right, you ready? And a lot of these videos also do not backwards bend all their folds, so it's totally not necessary. It just drives me nuts to have a bumpy paper cut at the end. It's a personal thing. I like it better. But the ones these people do, they're like four or five channels. They're so beautiful. 
they do um, fan fold cuts, you know, that are really long and you can use across the top of a room or over the top of a um, doorway or a window. Those are the Torans. <gasps> They're so pretty. So I'm taking the back flat part of my nail and just pressing out some folds that kind of got, when you change a fold from a mountain to a valley or vice versa, um, it can actually kind of do a weird wrinkle on the paper. So let me show you. Ta! So there we go. Let me do a quick, oops. This is the one that is more like, um, cause we cut this out. So this is going to be more like a frame. Let's do another heart because it's Valentine's Day or almost. Let's do hearts that come and go. Let's make our frame. Have an outside edge that is um, intricate. Lots of times I do the outside edge so it's pretty straight. Um, this one we're going to have some really deep cut ins, which will be fun. Let's do a little. I don't know if you can hear, but that's a very, it's kind of a low sound. That's where I'm cutting through all the layers at once. A little swirl. It actually is going to come out to look like a little pair of wings. Let's cut in there. There we go. Oops, let's do this side first. Bend backwards so it will lie flat. And um, if you ever get one of these and it still is, you know, really bumpy, bumpy, you can iron it on a not terribly hot, you know, get it as flat as you can. Sorry, backwards bending. Now see how this has the little bar in the middle? I mean, I guess you could keep it like this and you could put like a little photograph of you and a little photograph of your beloved. You could do that. Totally. This is legit. I'm going to cut it off. But you could keep it. You could even write the words you and me. So if you wanted to iron this because it's still a little bumpy... Put a piece of, this is just copy paper, put a piece of copy paper over it and iron it with a very gently warm, it doesn't need to be on a cotton setting, maybe a polyester setting or something. And that will be enough to get it nice and flat. Oh, that's so pretty. That's so cute. Like it's so bold just with a hearts pointing inwards and outwards together. That's really sweet. So this is our, oops, let's come out a bit. This is our artistic challenge for 
today um, to make Valentine cards or just regular cards. You don't have to put hearts in. You can make any old shape you want. Da, 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 da. There we go. I wish you people who love you and who tell you that they love you and who think you're kind of the cat's meow and me too. So um, I hope you have a lot of fun creating art and I hope you have a lot of love in your life and I will see you next time. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.